Thanks for staying with us. Now, a number of studies have shown that taking time away from the job can have physical and psychological health benefits. Now, people who take, who take vacations have lower stress, less risk of heart disease, a better outlook on life, and more motivation to achieve goals. Now, yesterday we talked about what we needed to do to distress. Today, we're focusing on holiday as a way to distress on a very pocket-friendly budget. Now, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. So I can see Akanima with the side of my eyes smiling. <laughs> I'll bring in our guests, like both guests in two minutes, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts. You know, why did you decide to take a holiday? And, you know, well, did you plan it and all of that? Well, I planned it <laughs> I had to. Okay, so we all know what happened during summer. We couldn't go anywhere. But I needed, I just need to breathe. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to breathe. And I was smiling because everything you read, it's actually true. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't just, in fact, working from home, it's a blessing. I'm not saying it's not a blessing, no. It's a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a... Mm. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, the stress leaves with you. Mm. You don't actually close. And then when, you ha when you're doubling with roles, like maybe you're a caregiver or you're a parent or just even living with your spouse, just being in that enclosed space, mm -hmm. it has it takes its toll on you. Absolutely. It does take its toll on you. But oh. today, I want to learn this budget thing. I'm so happy. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Dayo Andrew Ogumbayo is a chartered estate surveyor and a valuer by training, but a passionate traveler who loves to travel for fun and profit, but with emphasis on guaranteed value for money. In fact, I love that part when I saw it. Thank you. He's joined us via Zoom. Then Abim Bola Modinat Ebiti is a professional with cross-functional experience transcending investment and finance, hospitality, and taxation sector. And she's joined us live in studio. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. So Abim Bola, let me come to you. Um, holiday. COVID-19 happened on everybody 2020, right? Mm -hmm. It's been really, it's really been a tough year. And, you know, the reason we chose this topic, not many people were able to even make a lot of income. I'm not talking about salary earners. Even salary earners, some of them had mm -hmm. um, salary slashes and all of that, you know, so they are not even earning as much as they were earning before. Then for business people, their businesses were really, really affected, you know, this year. So, I mean, but we still know that in the midst of all of these things, it is important that we go on holidays, right? So, um, first of all, how, first, let me just even start with, how did COVID-19 affect the business of holiday? in Nigeria, you know. <laughs> Good evening. Um, nice to be here on your show. Uh, 2020 was a tough year. Um, a lot of um, industries, um, sectors were badly hit. Mm -hmm. The travel sector was one of the, the worst. worst hit. We had um, cancellations. Of course, airports were shut down. I mean, if you had your plans and you feel you could still travel, your airports are shut down. You can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Hotels canceling, airlines laying off staff. Um, it was a very bad year for people. Aside the um, financial implication of the COVID-19, it did a number on the mental health on people yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. You have people that on a normal day, um, after a very hectic um, um, work um, period, they take time off. Mm -hmm. Just go somewhere for like a week, come back, they're refreshed. refreshed. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people were forced to stay at home in the lockdown. Mm. They couldn't do anything, they couldn't travel. We had a lot of people calling like, I'm going crazy, I need That's time off. But you know, we couldn't have that. So um, at that point in time, we realized it was imperative to develop our domestic tourism sector. Fantastic. That's here in Nigeria. I'm speaking um, as in Nigeria. a travel consultant operating out of Lagos, Nigeria. Mm. Um, we had to um, look inwards. What do we have mm -hmm. within ourselves that we can actually push out there? Um, we don't have we and that, that does not need all the airport protocols and all of those no things. COVID no tests, COVID test, no yeah. I mean you could just be protected mm. wear your mask sanitize wash your hands and then you could just still have that time off mm -hmm. three four days five days one week 
in um, some nice place by the beach or anywhere, just somewhere different from your house mm -hmm. where you've been. So we started looking inwards and we saw um, a lot more people started going for the domestic tourism mm -hmm. option here in Nigeria. So, awesome. so far, <laughs> that's how people have been able to deal with it. Let me, let me ask um, Dayo, you are an avid traveler. You are passionate about traveling and you, you know how to give value back for money. So um, if you were to evaluate, do you think that COVID-19 has improved on the, the tourist destinations in Nigeria, the patronage for them? All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me on the show. Well, like Abimbola said, uh, the, the impact of COVID-19 cannot be overemphasized again. We've seen it. We've experienced it, we felt it, and everything about us has felt it. However, you know, uh, we have a saying, someone's misfortune is actually a fortune for another person, depending on how you harness all these potentials. Uh, for instance, a lot of people have never visited outside the, con uh, the state where they stay. Mm -hmm. But the, the good thing is now we have people calling they want to know more about UB State. They want to know about Yankari. They, it, it has never crossed their mind. But now... Oh, shoot. We're having trouble with it. But he was talking about the areas. Maybe you should come in. He was talking about the, the areas. We're going, to, we're going to now list all the places that you can go to in Nigeria before. <laughs> yeah, but let me ask. I, I was going to ask. It's beautiful to mention all these places, but... How are people responding to the security challenges that, you know, it's plaguing the country? Do people actually ignore that really to want to go to those places? Yes, that's a very valid question. And it's one of the questions we raise um, whenever we have um, stakeholders meetings with um, leaders in the tourism sector. Um, we try I mean, yes, there's these challenges we face, and we look for ways to um, improve on these challenges to make it easier for people to want to actually get. Within Lagos, it's relatively safe, actually. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of nice places you go to within Lagos to spend time, yeah. even outside of Lagos. I mean, of course, there are places outside, you know, turning upwards that um, they have these security issues. And for now, people are a bit wary of going to those places. Mm -hmm. But for the other places, we have quite a number of people. I mean, this Ibom Resort for mm. the new, for this December period is sold out. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. We have to be had to, I'm yeah. There. We've had to, we've had guests that were booked and once we reached our quota, we, we wanted to add more and they said, no, we're sold out. Yes. These are people that ordinarily would have gone somewhere else. Mm. Like everyone is forced to act. Well, actually, I didn't even know this place existed. We posted some place um, on our Instagram page, I think two days ago go that look like the desert safari the sand dunes in Dubai. and people are like no this can't be nigeria say yes this is nigeria <laughs> so you know uh, there's this rediscovery phase people are tending to look inwards what can i do mm -hmm. you have places that you could have fun and of, it might not be the exact experience you get outside of the country but you can just make do with what as we've long got. as it's a holiday yeah. I'm good. <laughs> well this is where the budget now comes yeah okay. so this is where the budget now comes <laughs> Because I, I know the last place you just mentioned that we all went, wow, can I really go there on the budget? Can I really go there on the budget? And then I think that the real question is whose budget? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> whose budget? Okay, whose budget so now we are moving to international travels. No, no, no. Within Nigeria. No, within Nigeria. Oh, within Nigeria. Like, we talked about Ibom. Right, Ibom. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so within Nigeria, it's just <laughs> simple, right? Yeah. If you want to vacation on a budget, you need to come up with a plan. Hmm. The first question being, what is my budget? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's a so question. <laughs> you don't, um, you don't, um, you're not looking at holidaying somewhere you know you ordinarily can afford. Mm. So you, you, you identify what your budget is. Um, 
like the Ibom Resort. I mean, the people that are staying there right now that I saw, they didn't just book it now, this December. They had booked it earlier. Mm. Things are cheaper when you plan ahead of time. Mm. You identify what your budget is mm -hmm. and um, you plan how much am I willing to spend. If you're like, say, a family of four, yeah, five. I was going to say. Okay, on a normal day, a room can't take a family of four or five. So you need two rooms or um, um, an apartment, for mm. example, depending on the accommodation flat, type. Yeah. So these things you need to plan ahead. You can actually save up. Do you? We, I mean, yeah, there are a lot of um, 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 travel. Um, yes, there's a lot of... Um, Different um, companies have different, um, like package. this pay small, small yes, scheme, for example. Package, yeah. Say, for example, your package for the holidays, say 600,000 naira, and every month you could pay 100,000 naira. So you've had, if you're knowing you're traveling in December, you start planning from June, mm. and you put 100,000 naira towards this thing. By December, you're all paid up and ready for your vacation. However, if you were to pay for it in December, you'd probably be paying like 800 because you yeah. need to consider cost of so many things last minute. You don't get the early advantage and all of that. Mm. So it's actually very, very, very important. It's imperative to plan ahead of time. Mm. A lot of Nigerians need to learn how to, how plan. to plan. Yes. How <laughs> and to plan, really. Okay, so we're going to go on a break. So when we come back from that break, I want us to just, you know, People are watching, people are listening. I want us to be able to break down quick destinations for this December because we truly need a holiday. COVID-19 has dealt with all of us. This is where we are talking. I, <laughs> <laughs> like, my boys are coming back home and I'm thinking, where should I go to? Someone mentioned, my husband has been there actually, the IITA resort. They oh, say I've it's so beautiful so and peaceful. Very peaceful. So I'm looking, you can go fishing, you know. So I want us to mention some places in Nigeria, then maybe some places outside of Nigeria that you can also still go on a budget that is open for travels because, you know, some states are still, some countries are still <laughs> under restriction yes, of the COVID. quite a number of countries yes, actually yeah Most so we'll Europe. take a short break when we return hopefully sansi will join us and we'll have our other guests back on zoom stay with us we'll be right back <laughs> 